Okay, let's see how this goes. How long you last and how long mummy lasts. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you are new, my name is Sonia. This is little baby Mia who has never really done a sit down video with me and I'm not quite sure how well it's gonna go, but we're gonna try. We live in Iceland, we make Iceland related content and currently we try to upload family vlogs. Um, there has been a little bit of <laughs> not really good uploading schedule recently and in this video I'm gonna kind of explain why and also explain that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that hopefully that will change very soon. So let's go back to nine months ago, the 21st of June last year, I gave birth to little Mia. Um, she's a midsummer baby and it was a relatively happy and healthy labor, 13 hours, completely natural, and I managed to experience the water pool, the birthing pool, twice within it. Um, the midwife that was with us, she was a little bit concerned about Mia's heart rate at one point, and so she asked me to get out of the pool. You want this? Teething. Uh, she asked me to get out of the pool so that they could just kind of check her vitals and um, check how far along I was, and at that point I was 10 centimeters. So I was told it was 10 centimeters, I was told it was time to push, and that we needed to get Mia out relatively quickly because they were, you know, just for the best, basically. Um, and so, mummy pushed for two hours. All the research I had done into giving birth explained that when you're 10 centimeters dilated, you feel like, okay, yeah, <laughs> this is not gonna work. <laughs> okay, so I put Mia down to play. Hopefully that's gonna work out a little bit better. So we're just gonna try and film and get through this because if I don't do it now, I just won't do it. So bear with me. I was 10 centimeters dilated, <laughs> little feet. Um, and yes, they asked me to push. I didn't at any point feel like I was ready to push. I didn't feel like my body could take over and help with the, the process. I pushed for two hours and I didn't really know what to expect, but boy, it was hard work. It was two hours of every single muscle in my body working to push Mia out. She arrived at 5.25 in the evening and was completely healthy and just absolutely beautiful. It was incredible and you know obviously you're very relieved that she is happy and healthy and all of her vitals are good but unfortunately I was left in a bit of a mess. I had a couple of tears and a third degree tear and I'd also had an episiotomy. It took almost two hours for them to stitch me back up. Obviously, you are incredibly um, swollen and everything is a bit of a mess down there. Um, but unfortunately, after healing um, and many, many months afterwards, I am definitely not healed and have been stitched up incorrectly, let's just say. So, things are not good. I have been through a lot of pain and discomfort in the last nine months um, and it has it's really really affected me it's affected my relationship with things like breastfeeding sitting on a very uncomfortable <laughs> area is not the most pleasant experience um, and it's something that I just did not think could happen I was researching a lot about labor but not necessarily about recovery for me I was just focused on baby and it took me a long time to actually push myself to speak to the doctor, the midwife, um, and then eventually to consultants about this. I think it was maybe about the sixth or seventh visit from our home midwife, um, where I, I just said, can you have a quick look and just let me know what you think? And she had a look and instantly said, this is not right. Um, and she transferred to her uh, referred me to the consultant at the hospital who told me that it was too late and that they couldn't do anything about it until I'd either would go back through labour again another time which at that point was not something I would be interested in um, or that I would just have to wait until uh, Mia was not breastfeeding through the night anymore and numerous different things so there was there was a lot of kind of 
um, rules and things that the hospital sticks to that meant that I could no longer be treated until this point in time. So nine months right now uh, postpartum and I am not in pain anymore but I'm still very much in discomfort. Um, but yes, this week I'm going back into hospital and I'm having a repair job. <laughs> this is possibly the weirdest thing that I've ever said and put out there on the internet but there just aren't videos like this and I'm pretty sure this happens to quite a few women unfortunately and I'm pretty sure that a lot of women just put up with it because actually you don't have time to think about yourself. You have a baby to concentrate on and a lot of the time when you do ask a midwife or a nurse or even a doctor about this and you ask for them to you know have a little check <laughs> they just tell you stop focusing on yourself you have a baby now and that's just not good because it's your health and it's your mental health as well but if you are going through anything like this i definitely recommend that you push forward you put your foot down and you try and get get the right person to have a look at you listen to you um, and start caring for you because you just can't live like this. It is just so draining to be in constant pain and discomfort and to try and still do things like breastfeed and even just getting out of bed to pick her up at night time and give her a cuddle and you know reassure her and put her back down into her cot is, is sore. Going to play groups and sitting on the play mat on the floor. <laughs> it's agony I can't sit down completely I have to sit on my side and there's just so many things that I've had to put up with that it just shouldn't it just shouldn't be like this it really really shouldn't and I feel for anyone else who is going through this and I just hope that this video will give you a bit of strength and support in this to go and either get help or push for more help um, or just show you that you're not alone. <laughs> this is definitely something that people don't talk about for obvious reasons. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, but it's it's an experience that you go through to have your child and you are sometimes left like this. And, you know, if there's something that can be done about it, then we should push for that. So I'm going to take you through preparing for the operation and how we're looking after Mia whilst mummy's having the operation and also recovering. This little girlie has done so well. <laughs> Let's go and have some food now. Let's go and have some food. Yeah. Ingemar has taken Mia for a walk. I'm gonna take a few minutes to myself just to plan and prepare what I'm gonna take to the hospital and what I'm gonna wear. A big oversized breastfeeding top, we've got some underwear, and then a big cozy um, cashmere cardi, and then some loose leggings because I'm gonna be sore. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take some pajamas. I don't think that I'll be overnight because it is a day operation, like a day surgery thing, um, but they said just in case, so. I'm taking some comfy pajamas and then some toiletries. Um, I've got the Clinique moisturizer and the Clarins lip, what is it? Replenishing lip balm, yeah. Because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be on gas and air or what's gonna happen with like pain medication and stuff. And then I've got my earphones and my charger, my charge cable, I need to get the plug because I've got a couple of podcasts in case I feel like listening to something, then I can pop that in and notebook in case I need to write anything down. And then I've got the paperwork for the operation and everything in my bag. I think I'm gonna use this bag. It seems a bit over the top, but I hardly ever use it. And it was a lovely wedding gift from Ingmar. So why not use it and not just keep it for good? And the last thing is my slippers. So I'm definitely going to take slippers because they advise that you do not want to slightly slip as you're walking around. I imagine that could um, be quite painful. So definitely taking some nice grip slippers. So it might be a little bit kind of too much information, but if you are having an operation like this um, or any kind of operation, related to that area or you are going into labour um, and thinking about your postpartum uh, recovery then these are the things that you definitely need to have which I'm sure you will have researched very well 
um, but yeah, I'll just go through them really quickly. Um, these are the things that I have in the bathroom ready for me. So first of all is this kit which I bought on Amazon. This is fantastic. Basically it's like a cold pack that you can put like in your pants and it's kind of this like squidgy sort of strip that you put in the fridge um, and it has hygiene slips that you can put inside there and reuse them, wash them and all that kind of thing. And then the rest of it is basically um, the lovely sexy uh, hospital pants, <laughs> some massive massive pads and some even huger ones in here. Basically these are just for cushioning so that you're a little bit more comfortable to move around. So I'm basically just trying to get as prepared as I possibly can whilst Ingemar is able to take me out for little walks and things. Um, so at the moment I'm a day away from the operation and I've got the bag ready, I've got like the bathroom stuff ready, <laughs> um, I've got my outfit ready and I have been feeding the freezer. I've made some serious lentil vegetable kind of broth soups. So these are both soya chilli, this is some beef stew and these are just chicken so I've done them in kind of honey and basically just a mix of herbs. These are some snack bars that I've made, they're kind of fruit and nut uh, flapjack sort of thing. And then I made these as well, they definitely look nicer on Pinterest but they're basically um, a kind of sandwich of banana with peanut butter and then a little bit of chocolate over them. This is mostly because Ingemar has gone keto and so he will sort out what he's going to eat um, and it would just be a pain for him to also have to cook for me and sort me as food so I've kind of organized my things so that if I'm up then I can defrost them and like cook them and get them ready and it's not a huge effort if I'm maybe not standing for too long or whatever but also it makes it much easier for him um, then he can just sort his own food and I've also done Mia's food. And in case you are interested what Mia has, um, I've used these little containers that my sister gave me and also these ice trays from Ikea, which I think everyone has as mum hacks. In the morning I take out whatever I want from the freezer to serve to her, I give her a bit of a mixture and some finger food on her tray as well. So she's got a bit of puree and also some kind of more baby led sort of finger food stuff. So this one is broccoli, it's the last one in the packet. So I'll do one of that and then we've got some butternut squash which she absolutely loves. So I'll do one of that, that's quite a large portion already. Um, I put some pear in it just to you know keep her um, regular <laughs> and then sweeten it up even more with maybe one apple. So this is just the ice trays and then it looks really pretty. So that just gets defrosted throughout the day and then she'll have that for kind of lunch and then top it up for, for dinner as well, depending on how hungry she is. And if need be, we'll also add in some prunes. So this is just boiled up prunes and then um, shoved in the Nutribullet and then I use these little squeeze pouches. And I quite often put some fruit mix in here with her porridge um, and just take that on the go as well. So I'll just show you Mia's um, kind of shelf on the fridge. Obviously there's the token banana, every baby has the banana around. We've got some milk left over, there's um, some boiled eggs here. The avocado, we always have avocado because it's definitely something that's good to fatten baby up, good fats. Uh, these are the teething bars that I made today. We've got some baby skier which she has as a little treat to kind of help her get through the rest of the meal that we want her to eat that is almost like a bribe really. We have some grot pouches here which are basically like porridge on the go and then she has some cucumber for her teething. So there we go, I think that's everything for this video and also for our prep for the operation. Um, I think that I've covered all bases. Ingmar is around to look after Mia so we're very lucky. Um, it means that you know she's, she's young, she's not going to really notice much of a difference but it means that she can still go to all of her play, play groups and everything um, and keep her routine normal. I will obviously be home, <laughs> I'll be able to still do quite a lot of things but I will have to rest and won't be able to um, pick her up and necessarily carry many things so I won't be able to just take her in the car seat and head out for a walk or something so it's good to have Ingemar home and have that extra pair of hands. Hopefully everything will go smoothly and after this in a few more weeks time I will be back to normal and I will feel so much better. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!